the U.S. will lose a military war with Russia and China. So you're right. The military very well might. <clears throat> However, the American people own 46% of all firearms in the world. And if you don't think we're trained and fucking ready for somebody to push a fucking button up in this bitch, you're wrong. Shalom. Kohlaimla Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, or Kakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahushai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. So no battle is won by a secular means or by man-made physical achievements. The battle is the Lord's. No king is saved by the multitude of his chariots and horses. Many people don't understand that we're entering into the death and the decline of one age and the rebirth of the nation of Jacob. The Davidic dynasty is emerging. The tabernacles of David the kings and the rulers of the sons of the living God. So they don't understand that. Every kingdom was looked upon as being undefeated or unbeatable. The Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greco-Roman Empire, and now NATO, the European Union, and the daughter of Babylon, or America. So every age has its rise and fall, and they're trying to break this cycle through a technocracy. But it's not going to work. It's over. It's over. Let's go here. <clears throat> go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 36. Let's get the context to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. So they're thinking carnally. How many guns you got? We're going to protect our guns, our Second Amendment rights. You mortals and your guns. <laughs> Inside joke. I think I stole that from X-Men. So this kingdom is not going to be saved or delivered by the amount of guns you have. So you're not thinking about the prophecies. The wicked don't understand that there is a change in the age underway. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. So wickedness being promoted leads to death, leads to a decline. It cannot be preserved if it's not built on 
the fundamentals of wisdom and the pillars of biblical knowledge. So this kingdom is fallen. There's a reason the Bible says Babylon is fallen. Let's go down to the bottom here. I want to highlight something. Let's go here. Psalms 36, verse 10. I'll continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. So there is an elect that's going to be preserved that are speaking the words of life, the wisdom of the Holy Scriptures, the good book. And that's an elect. Except the Lord had left us a remnant, we would have all been like Sodom and Gomorrah, burned up with fire. O continue thou, O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and she can't get up. So the children of wickedness are the children of Edom, the Edomites. So racking and stacking ammunition and guns is a waste of time. It might help temporarily, but the Lord is bringing a physical shift into the earth in these times. He's getting ready to bring down one kingdom and establish his own holy righteous kingdom. That's what's happening. And elect understand this through the spirit. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. So this kingdom under Edom is going to become a graveyard, the valley of the dry bones, and the landmass of America is going to be a desert wasteland for unclean creatures and wild animals. Let's go here. Proverbs 16, verse 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? So the greatest gift of all is the gift of the Holy Spirit that fuels our understanding and strengthens our faith, not materialistic wealth. What good is that going to do when the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth and the heavens is going to pass away with a great noise, nuclear destruction? Verse 17, Proverbs 16, verse 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. So the Lord is going to make a way out of no way. The highway. There is going to be a divine intervention to take up his elect. He's going to say, come up hither. So it's going to take a divine spiritual force to deliver the Lord's elect from the great major devastation that's getting ready to come upon the earth. A highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Proverbs 16, verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction 
and a haughty spirit before a fall. So the pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Esau thinks that his sword is going to save him, his weaponry. But the Bible says otherwise. Yes, he was blessed with the sword. But there is a law associated with living by that sword. Let's go to Revelation 13, verse 9. Revelation 13, verse 9. If any man had an ear, let him hear. So the gift of understanding comes through the Holy Spirit. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So the gift of faith gives us an ability to be able to see through the smoke and mirrors. The decline and the end of this one age, the old world, is on its last leg. The international bankers are losing sleep at night. They're tossing and turning, working evil upon their planning on bed chambers. So they understand where we are. They commune with high-level spirits. They know their time is up. So no matter how many guns we buy, it does not stop Bible prophecy or the word. Let's go here. Isaiah 55. Let's go to verse 9. Isaiah 55, verse 10. For as, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So prophecy prevails. The Lord's word is like the seasons that are on autopilot that cannot be stopped or turned back. Let's go here to the book of Sirach, chapter 10. Book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God and his heart is turned away from his maker. For pride is the beginning of sin and he that have it shall pour out abomination and therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So every kingdom had its time to shine and rise up and rule and rule over the nations. But they were lifted up in arrogancy and just gave themselves credit for having risen up to great prominence and dominance and being reverence. The Most High raises up one king and setteth down another. Go to verse 14. The Lord hath cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. Jacob is meek and humble. The Israelites, the Lord hath plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. Sirach 10 and 14. The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen 
and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He took some of them away and destroyed them and have made their memorial to cease from the earth. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. So the Lord respects the meek and the lowly. So he has respect for his elect. When you look at that word respect, it's returning into spectacle or vision, returning back into the apple of his eye, the Lord's chosen. Let's get ready to close out here. Go to Proverbs 29, verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So this is not what the Most High respects. The U.S. will lose a military war with Russia and China. So you're right. The military very well might. <clears throat> However, the American people own 46% of all firearms in the world. And if you don't think we're trained and fucking ready for somebody to push a fucking button up in this bitch, you're wrong. When the Bible's not wrong, neither is the most high. Proverbs 29, verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So it's honorable to occupy until the Lord comes. That means to labor in this ministry and to be of a contrite spirit, brokenhearted because of this low condition and the kingdom has not been established. The Lord has not returned. So it's honorable to wait patiently on Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai and be vexed in spirit because of the hurtful works of the wicked. Tyrannical rule, fake fruit, fake vegetables, contaminated water, contaminated and polluted air, illegal wars. See, that brings us here. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 9. All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy and they were forgotten in the city wherein they had so done. This is also vanity. So he's going to have no name in the street. They're going to be forgotten about. What happens when somebody is buried in the graves after a hundred years? Nobody can even find their tombstone. Matter of fact, they just take them, pull up, and resell the holes. You can look this up. They just resell those same holes that they sold 80 to 100 years ago. So they are forgotten. Job, Job 18 or 17. His remembrance shall perish from the earth and he shall have no name in the street. So pride goeth before destruction. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kwakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and the blood of all. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.